Ora si Però registrerà la conferenza. Okay, good afternoon everyone, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to see you again. Uh, again, my name is Paula and I am going to be your teacher for the next couple of hours. And today we're going to be describing the territory. All right, so uh, the first thing I have to do is share the screen with you. So it's just going to take a couple of minutes. The time to upload the application. All right. All right. Okay, um, I trust uh, you can see uh, the upload from uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And let's get started. All right, so as you can read on your screen, it says the great outdoors, great outdoors. So again, uh, it's a description for me today. Uh, to describe these great outdoors, which are our beautiful Italy, which is famous for its landscape and its history all over the world. Tourists have forever been attracted to Italy and what this peninsula has to offer vacation-wise, especially for those willing to stay outdoors. So today we'll leave behind the museums and dedicate our attention to the fresh air and the activities that can challenge the tourist's curiosity. We'll be looking at the fauna as well to make sure we have the correct pronunciation. Now, um, at first I was quite overwhelmed by all the possible sports and I realized that all of Italy's territory was worth speaking about. I imagined that most of you are Italian and know very well your own territory. I thought that many of you are tour operators, so you know your geography much better than I do. All right. So what I did was put together a presentation which Hopefully, you will find interesting and will capture your attention, if not sport-wise, then at least for the scenery. Let's say that I love the outdoors. I want to spend my time doing something where I can stay outside and get as much sun and air as possible. I want to move. I'm into sports. And I spend most of my work hours inside. All right, I'm so sorry to make you hold on. Having trouble. Here we are. All right, next image. Whether it be with the whole family or in complete solitude by yourself. There are some cool activities you should try at least once in your lifetime. A thrilling experience that will last forever, like a skyline, which you can observe, uh, for example, below on your right, or paragliding through the air, or not rafting, or simply snorkeling in the Mediterranean Sea. For a couple of years now, with the new entry of the electrical bicycle known as e-bikes, we have the chance to discover new places without having to give up location, which would result in possible to see unless you aren't a trained cyclist. I haven't had the pleasure of trying an e-bike out yet, but I've been told by my 75-year-old neighbor that although it is a little heavier, it has given him the opportunity to reach 
and discover new places he hadn't seen before. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to pause uh, a couple of minutes. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry. Uh, can you hear me better now? Can you just confirm that you can hear me better, please, in the chat? Uh, all right. Um, I hopefully. All right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Uh, I hope you've been able to follow me up till now. Uh, I was I was uh, talking about sports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start once again very quickly from this screen on. All right. So we were saying whether it be with the whole family, whether it be with the whole family or in complete solitude by yourself, there are some cool activities you should try at least once in your lifetime. A thrilling experience that will last forever, like a skyline, as we were saying, and you can find that at the bottom right of your screen, or paragliding through the air, or why not, rafting, or simply snorkeling in the Mediterranean Sea. For a couple of years now, with the Let's, uh, we were talking uh, before we paused about the e-bike and we had the chance to discover new places without having to give up locations, which would result in possible to use unless you aren't a trained cyclist. And as I was telling you before, um, I haven't had the pleasure of trying an e-bike uh, out yet. But I've been told by my neighbor, who is 70 years old, that although it is a little heavier, it has given him the opportunity to reach and discover new places he hasn't seen before. All of this while he was pedaling at his own pace. So his own rhythm, this is possible with your e-bike. All he had to do is remember to recharge, of course. And last but not least, on the left side of your screen, we have skiing. And skiing is naturally our major winter attraction. The Alps are a destination to tourists from all over the world, interested in challenging the highest peaks. Italy offers a great deal of reserves especially up north, which offer wonderful ski resorts. Of these reserves, the oldest is the Grand Paradiso National Park, which is located between Valdosta and Piedmont. Today, the reserves covers 71,000 hectares of mountain terrain, which includes forests, marshes, lakes, waterfalls, and about 30 glaciers spread across five valleys. These reserves offer modern facilities and accommodations for those who are already expert skiers, but also for those who are willing to learn such an exciting sport. Trained ski instructors are at your disposal.
Tourists can buy membership passes that will give them freedom to take a ski lift or a cable car to reach the peak of the mountain and go down its slope at high speed, whether it be downhill skiing or cross country on hidden trails, which pass through the wood and sometimes even a small hill slope as well. So if you're planning on doing cross country trail, uh, this does not mean that uh, you will not be encountering uh, small slopes. Everything is possible while you're cross country uh, skiing through trails. All right, so let's take a look at our equipment and accessories. All right, so on your left, you have clothing, ski snowboard jacket, of course, your ski pants, which are considered to be your ski trousers, your ski socks. Of course, it says stay away from cotton. It makes you sweat. Synthetic or wool-based layers to keep dry and warm is the best. Waterproof gloves or mittens. The difference there is the gloves, all five fingers, and uh, the mittens, only the thumb, and all fingers are together, right? Winter boots. These make walking in snow much easier, of course. And uh, quite interesting, remember uh, what we put on after we ski, those are called moon boots, right? Because they're very similar to uh, the boots that were worn by the astronauts on the moon. The gaiters scarf to protect your neck and your face, quite useful at times, and uh, a most forgotten piece of uh, garment there, which is quite useful. Let's look at the accessories. Um, quite important also is the pronunciation. Goggles to help protect your eyes from the wind and sun. Uh, it's quite important. You don't want to have red eyes at the end of the day. A helmet, of course, for warmth. That's true, but most of all for safety. Let's remember that. And maybe um, your goggles and your helmet have been bought together, so one does not disturb the other. Uh, that happens sometimes. A ski hat, why not? Or after skiing. Ski poles, absolutely necessary. Sunglasses for relaxing during lunch or after skiing. Of course, if you want to look cool, sunscreen, don't forget your sunscreen. Wear this even on cloudy days, you'd be surprised. Lip balm, oh goodness, isn't that something we always forget, isn't it? All right, now, um, I'm so sorry, they're telling me I should pause one more time to change the microphone. I will be right back. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Here I am once again. Can you just let me know if you're hearing a little bit better as we've changed headphones at least a couple of times? Maybe this time is the best. All right, so if you can just write down on the chat, please, and let us know if you're hearing me correctly this time. Much better, great, fantastic. Happy to hear it. Great, not so bad. All right, 
So let's move on. I've left you with the accessories and the equipment. Uh, now, if you're not skiing, if you want another activity, uh, we're talking about uh, skating this time around. Skating is actually uh, pretty new uh, in uh, some places, in some reserves in Italy, and they're actually under construction. They're actually thinking of building new arenas, new arenas, right? And skating rinks uh, is the correct word. You need a skating rink to be able to skate if you're not skating on a lake, right, on a, a river. So whether it be indoors or outdoors, if it's indoors, you're skating in an arena, all right? That's your choice. Many ski locations will have an outside skating rink, but also an arena. Okay, so we're back. Uh, this is technology for you. The important thing is that you're following me. And uh, I'm just going to ask you to be patient just a couple of minutes more because I have to recharge my PowerPoint. All right. And hopefully this time around, it's going to listen to me. Would be very nice, wouldn't it?
All right, everyone, I hope you can hear me now. All right, I hope I will have the opportunity to keep on going. Please bear with me. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry for, uh, for the mishappenings. Uh, it's, it's been a, a, it's a very nice presentation, so I hope you will be able to see it. All right, so here we are. We've got extreme sports. Uh, so another winter sport is, of course, skating, as we mentioned before. But how many extreme sports are there? So let's take a look. If you like, you can comment in the chat and let us know which one you prefer and why. All right. So from the top, let's look into this. We've got aggressive inline skating. Uh, this is peculiar. This is a peculiar sport. This is a peculiar sport. Uh, nope. No, so sorry. No. All right. So here we are. <laughs> Extreme sports, aggressive inline skating now. Uh, this is a serious sport, have to be careful, usually done in an arena, of course. Face jumping, once again, if you have a trampoline as well, that's considered to be base jumping. Bungee jumping is the correct pronunciation. If uh, you're willing to uh, feel some uh, true shivers, free climbing. Bouldering is in at the moment, a lot of uh, bouldering gyms, sandboarding, motocross, mountain biking, MTB. We will get back uh, to that in uh, just a couple of minutes. Rock climbing, mountaineering, which is uh, becoming a very, very cool sport and is also in the new Olympics. Hand gliding, skydiving, paragliding, sand kiting, that's a new one there. Skiing, of course, scuba diving, water skiing, and skateboarding. All right, I just thought I'd throw that at you. Many different extreme sports for the people who are really, really into sports. On your left, as you can see, we have hiking. We have hiking. So. Uh, as you can see, I'm drawing your attention to the easiest yet so satisfying of all the sports, hiking. We were born to walk, weren't we? All right, so here we are. Let's do it. If you think about it, Italy is after all a boot. Now, uh, as you can see, this is a graph. If you want a chart, which says it all, it's a brainstorm of ideas when you think about hiking. There are so many words that some are even unreadable. So let's just take a look. Backpack, park, safety, trekking, dehydration. That's kind of cool. Remember to always have something to drink with you. Hypothermia, wow, be careful there. Health, forest, so associations of thought. Walking tour, sunburn journey, okay. Landscape, tramping, climbing, different ways of doing sports. Of course, as a tourist, they hike. My gosh, so many different words out there, okay. Everything which is associated to hiking. On your left, you have travel. Frostbite. What's frostbite? Frostbite is when you have those that icy snowflake on your lips, right? Due to the cold. That is called frostbite. Hill walking, which of course is like hiking. Hiker lifestyle, healthy. How good is hiking for you? Of course, it's very good. It makes your heart rate go at a natural, healthy pace. Trail, nature, so many different words 
let me just finish by saying leisure and recreation, all right? Leisure is one of those words in English that you can pronounce in two ways. You can say leisure and you can also say leisure. What is the path? It's the trail. It's a synonym for saying trail. And you've got winter, you've got summer, you've got autumn. I think that you can uh, do some hiking or trekking as a synonym in uh, any month of the year, All right? Okay, so here we are. Um, I think we're now ready to start a new adventure. I've put together a series of the most interesting hikes from north to south. Uh, please forgive me if I've forgotten your favorite. Uh, choosing wasn't easy. It was actually hard work. I confess that I've never had the pleasure of seeing most of these places. So I kind of picked the location as a future tourist for myself, all right? I wrote down from start to finish and took into consideration the distance as well. Let's look at the first one. We have the Dolomite. And as you can see there, it says uh, the Trecima di Lavaredo. Start to end, it tells you where you're going to start and where you're going to finish. The length, uh, nine kilometers and a half and the duration it's a three to four hours climb and I, I think it was quite important also to write down the difficulty right um of course if also if you're traveling with the whole family so the unesco world heritage listed the dolomites it's an alpine pocket in italy's northern territories a land of jacket peaks which trust upwards from rolling alpine meadows, endless alpine lakes, incredible hiking. I would say quaint medieval towns with lots of wellness areas and accommodations for mountain huts. So thanks to its prime location and its unique geological structure, Italy can boost on its territory, which has an amazing amount of natural wealth. Now, the Italian geologist Antonio Sopani described Italy as being the Bel Paese way back in 1876. I believe this is still true today. All right, so here we are. And we've got the Gran Paradiso National Park. Again, as you can see from start to end, the length, this is a 20 uh, and a half kilometer trail. And this is a pretty long one because it lasts about 10 hours. The difficulty is demanding. Oh, but what a satisfaction. <laughs> Weighing down, going down south, we have Corno Grande, which is in Abruzzo. Again, you can park your car at Campo Imperatore. This time, the length is not so bad. It's just a nine kilometer climb if you want. And from five to seven hours, the difficulty here is quite moderate. It's a normal route. And again, it's not so demanding. The Trail of the Gods on the Amalfi Coast. Uh, the start is in Positano and it ends in Traiano. The length again is an eight kilometer length and lasts about four hours and a half. The difficulty is considered to be easy or moderate. What a view. And let's go back to our Ligurian coast, right? This is called the uh, Azzurro Trail. So it's a blue trail once again in the uh, Cinque Terre and it starts to end. It says, check ahead to see which sections are open and the duration is from three to four hours again from easy to moderate accessible for the whole family let's go down to sardinia selvaggio blue wild blue if you rather 
And again, the start is in Pedra Longa. It ends in Cala Fuyiri, I believe that is. The length is 45 kilometers. The duration, four to seven days. Wow, all right. Of course, this is quite demanding. Last but not least, we have Stromboli, which is in, Aeolian, uh, is in the Aeolian Islands in Sicily. And of course, the start is uh, in the town. The length is uh, seven and almost, uh, let's say in all eight kilometers, 7.8 kilometers. The duration is from five to six hours. Uh, that means uh, going and coming back there, backwards and forwards. So return, right? So it's a full circle round. The difficulty is moderate and demanding, but what a vision, what a vision that is. Great. Okay, so let's talk about the fauna of the peninsula. And as you can see here, we have the symbolic animal of the Alps, which is the ibex. It's widespread once at high altitude throughout the Alps, now subject to indiscriminate hunting. So, of course, you have to be careful of its extinction. Now, since 1850, the King Vittorio Emanuele II had established in these valleys a royal hunting reserve. As you can see on your left, you have what we call in English, once again, the ibex. Another word is the chamois. All right. And uh, if you rather, it is considered to be the rock goat, the rock goat. All right. On your right, you have the deer and the roe. The roe is the capriolo that is considered to be the roe. All right. Many different kinds of uh, animals. I just thought of showing you at least a couple. Uh, the brown bear and the lynx can be seen in the Brenta Park region, although they are both considered to be approaching extinction. The brown bear and the lynx are still foundable today in Italy, but they are approaching extinction. Many different kinds of birds can be found, depending on the region, of course, uh, from the Ligurian seagull to the Hurons. Experts say that the Ligurian seagull can also be seen in the Cuneo Valley nowadays, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, the seagulls are coming up in the Cuneo region from the sea, changing their habits, if you uh, wish. On the left, you have the famous woodpecker. We call it the buzzard. We call it the buzzard, the woodpecker. And the hawk falcon, the famous poyana from uh, the Piemont region. On the right there at the top right, you have a famous Harry Potter headwig, right? It's the winter owl, many different kinds of owls all through Italy. And the pheasant, the pheasant, which is an appetizing dish as well. All right. Cuneo also boosts a wolf reserve in Entracque, which attracts tourists that learn to reconsider the famous tale on how dangerous a wolf can be. Um, as a Canadian, I can assure you that only a mother wolf can attack if she considers to be in danger. Hopefully the myth, uh, the myth sorry, of the bad wolf will disappear in time and farmers will find the correct way to defend their cattle or herds, right? So a wonderful, wonderful museum. If you have the opportunity, to go up to Entraque, you also have the Tower of uh, Observation there. And there's a museum inside, which is quite an original museum. Um, very, I, I would advise you to stop at this uh, uh, Centro Faunistico Uomini e Lupi. Now, speaking of herds, here we are. It's a good idea to remind tourists to be careful 
on the road, especially in the outskirts of the city or in the suburbs, but lately also on the highways, right? Have to be careful there. So we have, let's look at this grammar if you want, or way of saying, we say flock of sheep, herd of cattle, the herd of cattle there is a uh, bottom right. Wild boars are always a problem, top right. And rows on the left, top side. Have to be careful. It's good to remind the tourists. Other fauna you can find is the whistler. If you want the marmot. We call it the whistler because it whistles, of course. Others uh, can call it also the hound dog. Hound dog. So, marmot, whistler, hound dog. Synonyms to describe the same animal, very common animal up in the mountains. The porcupine is also called the hedgehog, one there at the center of your screen. The badger, top right of the screen the badger can reach 35 kilograms and is sometimes seen at dusk when the sun goes down coming out of the town's trees so i don't know if this ever happened to you but uh, i've i've seen a couple of those uh in uh, the cuneo region and they're actually pretty big and they have a gorgeous flat tail very very nice the squirrel of course how can we forget the squirrel? And the fox, which seems to be a lot more sociable these days uh, compared to before. Uh, before fox were afraid, now uh, they will stop by the side of the road. And uh, you can take many pictures of foxes uh, in uh, all through uh, the Italian regions. All right, so next screen up, sometimes Tourists take for granted dangers of hiking through the woods or mountains. A suggestion can always be made and is usually well accepted. Let's look at these suggestions. So on the left side, you have the grass snake. Uh, it gives me shivers just to look at it, uh, but it is not considered to be a dangerous species. Whereas the viper snake, I'm sure you've all recognized it. And you can find this, of course, in the woods, sleeping in the sun. So do be careful. And of course, you can advise the tourists as well not to take for granted these snakes. Also, because sometimes it's kind of hard to, to figure out if it's a grass snake or a viper snake. Luckily, you can find first aid kits in emergencies. How can you go about telling the tourist? You can say, have you got a first aid kit? Have you thought about buying a first aid kit? I would advise you to buy one for emergencies. You may purchase a first aid kit as well as a Viper tactical first aid pouch at your nearest drug store. All right. Now, I couldn't help myself but uh, put in the salamander, which I love to see, especially when it rains, especially when it rains. Uh, but unfortunately, we have once again uh, another danger ahead. As you can see, it says don't eat them. Well, I would like to also add don't touch them because then we forget we've touched them. And as you well know, we touch our eyes, we touch our nose, we put our fingers in our mouth. So um it's it's a good idea also to warn tourists if uh, they like uh, taking strolls in the woods as well so be careful with mushrooms careful with mushrooms all right dusty packs rules of the trail so we have this very cool rabbit as you can see and he's just um giving us advice and reminding us the rules of the trail. Now, I don't know about you, but I have my favorite in there. And uh, I'm going to ask you if anyone would like to participate and write down in the chat. Let's just go over these dusty pack rules of the trail. First one, know where you're going, carry a map. 
Now, it might sound a little old fashioned if you want. If you have a GPS, which is fine, carry a map. Uh, even the most experienced trailer uh, will have a map and may get lost. So be careful there. Hike with a buddy, don't always hike alone. If you do hike alone, be sure to tell someone where you're going and when you will be back. Always carry enough water and drink it, especially in Italy. Not all of the regions in Italy offer fountains and uh, so uh, it's easy to get dehydrated. Keep snacks in your pack to keep your energy up and for emergencies, you never know, you need something sugary in your bag. Always be respectful of the environment and other hikers. Yes, be careful, you're not alone in the woods. Stay on the trail, don't just go off trail. Uh, you know, you can find uh, harmful plants and soils. You can uh, stumble and hurt yourself badly. If you want to listen to music, take earphones. Now, I don't know why you would want to do that because uh, of course nature has its own sounds, but uh, yes, please remember to bring your earphones with you. Not everyone in the woods wants to listen to your radio channel. Many hikers seek solitude and uh, or the sounds of nature once again, chirping, the birds chirp. If you take your dog on a trail that allows dogs, keep it on a leash Unrestrained dogs can harm wildlife, first of all, and always clean up after your dog if it poops. Uh, I might also add sometimes dogs scare the tourists. So, of course, it's a good reminder. Leave no trace. If you packed it in, pack it out, which means if you put something in your pack sack and you've maybe used it, don't leave it in the woods but bring it back home, bring it back home. All right, and don't collect protect flowers, please. Very nice, Sergio, well done. I think that's a good one too. Uh, please write down what your favorite is. Uh, I would really like to hear it. Uh, my true favorite is no screaming, no screaming in the woods. Uh, I don't know why anyone would want to do that. You can have fun without screaming. Of course, uh, laughing is something you can do, which is quite nice to have fun in the woods. Uh, so again, if you would like to share your point of view, I just like Sergio just did, anyone else, please let us know. And just to have a little laugh there on the right, we have talking tales, shh, don't scare the mushrooms, because maybe if the mushrooms get scared, they won't grow, all right? So we'll be waiting for your responses in the chat. Okay, so let's get back on track. We have uh, the breathtaking territory of the Lange and Monferrato region, uh, which is the perfect place to go if tourists do want to try a delicious meal with mushrooms, along with a good glass of wine. These two sub-regions of Piedmont have also been included since 2014 in the list of the world heritage sites of, by UNESCO. We're talking about vast expanses of greenery alternated with numerous vineyards and orchids, which embrace the provinces of Alessandria, Asti, and Cuneo. These, uh, this territory is predominantly hilly. All right. Among the different activities that allow you to stay in contact with nature, tourists have the possibility of taking a ride in a hot air balloon, why not, to appreciate the dawn or the dust colors of this impressive landscape. If you rather keep your feet on the ground, we suggest a romantic Vespa tour or uh, an off-the-road tour with quads which is even more adventurous. Very nice. All right, so here we are. Let's go back to our sport. This is actually my favorite sport. Cycling is, of course, one of the most 
practiced sports in Italy. Famous professionals and non-professionals races gather tourists from all over the world. Here are just a few, and maybe the most famous, might I add, tourists can subscribe online before their arrival. So let's look at these. Uh, as you can see there, top left, we have uh, the Dolomiti Marathon, and then uh, the Brabra, uh, and Il Giro delle Valli Monregalesi, the Fausto Coppi, l'Eroica, uh, the Trofeo La Gueglia, and La Via del Sale, of course. Now, cycling. Cycling can be on gravel, on trails, or on road. And as we mentioned before, there is an upcoming request on e-bikes, on e-bikes. All right, here we are. Rafting, scuba diving, fishing, snorkeling, swimming, and sailing. Okay, let's not forget our summer activities by the Mediterranean or the Adriatic. Some tourists also consider rafting in our rivers. Kayak, hydrospeed, or canyoning is possible from Valsesia to Calabria. Professional scuba drivers are at your service to help you learn and teach you how to use the equipment in a safe environment for unforgettable adventures for the whole family. Fishing, there's a comeback for fishing now, an interesting and peaceful way of staying outdoors. And if you get lucky, you can even catch a good dinner. All right, now I'm, I believe someone has uh, given back some input, if I'm not mistaken, on um, which they prefer. Let me uh, just take a look at the chat. All right, Sergio says, anti-viper serum is no more available in pharmacy. That's too bad. All right, that is too bad. Uh, but um, maybe, Sergio, what is your suggestion? Uh, what would you suggest? Um, uh, let's say that, unfortunately, um, there's no more anti-viper serum available in pharmacy. Let's say this happens to you. Uh, what would you suggest? Uh, let's hear your input. And uh, as Sergio said, don't collect protect flowers. I agree with you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your opinion. I would also like to hear uh, what you think about uh, the mushrooms in the woods. Or would you be willing to collect mushrooms with uh, maybe um, an illustrated book? Or do you think that is not a wise thing to do? Sergio says, only in hospitals, and poison center control. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's luck, I have to say. Luckily, we have wonderful hospitals in Italy, so let's not just panic. But I think it would be wise uh, to tell the tourists uh, in uh, uh, a good fashion and say, uh, please be careful out there. And uh, of course, I'm sure there is full of time to head for the hospitals. All right. So. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break five and we will be right back. Uh, again, please feel free to ask anything at all uh, right down in the chat. Uh, I, it's, it's wonderful to be able to share your point of views and your ideas. Also in the five trails that I've uh, anticipated, uh, I hope they've been original for you. Maybe they're the classical trails or maybe you have another suggestion to make. All right, so let's make five and we will be right back. Thank you once again.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is now 3.30, half past three. And uh, I just want to say thank you for sharing your opinions with us uh, in the chat. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite nice to be able to have a conversation with you. And um, now uh, Sylvia asked, before I used Alpine Hut, and uh, yes, it's true, it means Rifugio Alpino. You can also use shelter. They're all synonyms, they're all synonyms. Refuge, yes, all synonyms, they're shelters. Shelter is a place where you feel safe, where you can go and um, um, defend yourself and feel safe, all right? So Sylvia, yes, of course, your answer is uh, yes, absolutely, absolutely, all right. Now, uh, I would also like to know if anyone has any questions about the presentation. You're quite welcome, Sylvia. It's my pleasure. Uh, anything about the presentation you did not understand, maybe uh, at the beginning while the microphone wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, so nice, uh, is there someone who has any questions at all to ask? Feel free to do so. All right. Um, so uh, by the end of uh, this hour, we will stop and we will have time for conversation, at which time I'm crossing my fingers, someone will share their opinions with us. All right. So uh, just going to ask you for a couple of minutes uh, because I need to share my screen. All right. So let's go back to the presentation. All right, it just takes me a minute to move all of the chats and I will be with you in just a moment. Okay, I believe we're back on track and here we are again. So scuba diving, fishing, snorkeling, swimming and sailing. Of course, uh, I think um, I, my personal opinion is uh, you should be just a little bit afraid of the water to be able to appreciate it more and not to give for granted sports. I think it's quite important if you want to be a true sport and have a good time, you have to be careful. You have to be careful at all times. All right, so almost finished with my presentation. Let's keep going. All right, here we are. So I just thought we could turn our attention just for five minutes towards the islands in Italy. 
Uh, as I said at the beginning, I purposely skipped museums, but a word must be said on uh, historical landmarks and on the islands of Italy. They hold such beautiful and uncontaminated beauty. Uh, and um, from scuba diving or plain snorkeling to cycling or hiking, they are a true treasure to this land. So again, we saw a piece of Sardinia before, a piece of Sicily, and we also have the island of Elba. Again, a good pronunciation of islands, although it is spelt with an S, is islands. And uh, there's also an abbreviation on that, if you wish, and that is Isles, I-S-L-E-S, -E Isles. So if you should ever see Isles, that is the abbreviation of island. And again, the S is considered to be silent. Okay. Historical landmarks, please forgive me if there are uh, just a counted historical landmarks on this image. Uh, kind of difficult to uh, put all of them in, of course. Uh, what are historical landmarks? Landmark is a compound word, which means uh, that it is a word made up of two smaller words. So land and mark. Uh, so again, land being the territory and a mark on the territory, which means, again, a historical monument. And of course, maybe we all have different historical landmarks, especially maybe thinking of Rome. There are so many different monuments. Uh, for me, it's the Colosseum. Maybe for you, it's uh, St. Peter's. Who knows? All right. So... Uh, I thought it was um, that it would be a good idea to also speak about the historical landmarks in Italy. There are so many and they are loved by everyone. So it's practically impossible to tour Italy with, uh, without having the pleasure of visiting these historical sites, altogether making Italy such a wonderful place to visit. All right, now I uh, have reached the end of uh, my presentation, although um, we've had some technical problems between the PowerPoint and the GoToMeeting app, but that happens sometimes. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, although the meeting is not over. Uh, and I thought I would use the landscape of uh, Dolciacqua there, which is in Liguria, as you well know. All right. So here we are. I'm just uh, going to end my presentation. Here I am. I'm back. Hello, everyone. All right. So first off, I really want to ask you if you have any questions at all, something you did not understand. Is there something that you would like to ask me? Please feel free. To write it down in the chat and uh, we can we can speak about it all together all right um which is your favorite trail and in which region is it that's the first thing i would like to ask you now you're in the business uh hopefully there are many uh sporty people out there which have joined us today which is your favorite trail now is it something that maybe, uh, is it a trail that we haven't spoken about? Is it a trail that you would like to share with us? Please feel free to do so, so we can keep the conversation going, right? And in which region? So please feel free to share. I am, uh, of course, speaking directly also to Sergio because uh, I, uh, I heard he was very keen on uh, having a conversation, so. Sergio, I'm asking you directly, which is your favorite trail in Italy? Uh, do you enjoy walking? And if you do, trekking, hiking, they're all synonyms. Where is it? Where is it? All right. Um, 
I have to say, personally, I'm madly in love with uh, Val d'Aosta. So that up there, it's a great place. But um, I'm calling you from Cuneo. And I have to say, when I have five minutes free, I like to go up to uh, the famous Fortini in the Colle di Tenda. And I love to take walks up there. So if you share my same passion, please feel free to write it down in the chat. All right. Uh, now, is there something that uh, maybe I said that was wrong? Uh, please forgive me and let me know because, uh, of course, I'm not in the I'm not a tour operator, but an English teacher. So yeah, it, it can get difficult at times. Ah, uh, oh, so here we have someone saying my favorite trail. Oh, let me just open my chat here for you, and let's see. My favorite trail is in Area Protette, Alpine Maritime, Cima Pagari. Am I saying this right? Or Passo del Monte Carbone. I'm madly in love with Val Gesso. All right, Francesca, thank you for sharing that with us. Ah, oh, here's Sergio. Sergio's back. I like to go walking in the mountains, for example, around Monviso. All right. Now, what did you think, Sergio, about the IBEX presentation there? Uh, and again, ladies and gentlemen, what did you think about the fauna, the, uh, the words to describe the animals? Did you know all of these words? Did you find it interesting? All right, uh, Sergio, please tell us your experience and Francesca as well. What did you think about uh, my warnings, my warnings on maybe the herd and uh, uh, the fact that you have to be careful when you are traveling and also the rows, the different deers. For example, uh, from what I've been told, uh, the big deers are found in the Monviso region and not in the Cuneo Valley. Now, Sergio, do you agree with that? Do you think that's true? All right. Uh, so while I'm waiting for your uh, messages to pop up, crossing my fingers there you want to share with us your points of views let's go back to the different hiking offers uh, again we had stromboli uh, wow what a lovely place like i told you before unfortunately i haven't had uh luck uh i haven't had the luck about of um of uh, going to these wonderful places but i would like to yes we spoke about the wild animals. Uh, Sergio, uh, maybe you skip that. Um, yes. Uh, we, we spoke about the animals. Uh, let's, uh, let's go back. Would you like to see that once again? I'm crossing my fingers um, that I'll be able to share my screen with you. Uh, yes, uh, Sergio, we did speak about wild animals. Uh, Cinzia, I will be with you in just a minute, and Liliana as well. All right, let's see if I can find it. Let's go back. Let's go back. Here we are. Uh, Sergio, I'm hoping you can see this. And okay. All right, uh, this is especially for Sergio, he's been quite sociable and talkative. And as you can see, this is the Ibex. Uh, Sergio, we spoke about the Ibex and we said, uh, yeah, there it is, it's the Ibex and how it represents. Um, let me just, uh, uh, please be patient with me. I need to get my PowerPoint back up. Okay, here it is. Yes, all right. So we were speaking about the Ibex. Uh, Sergio, I'm, I'm so sorry you lost it. It was, it was pretty interesting because I was uh, speaking about how um, the king, the king really wanted a special reserve, a special reserve uh, to be able to keep the Ibex in the mountains 
And of course, as you well know, with the, the hunting season, they have to be well kept. Uh, do you agree with this or do you think there are too many of them? Because of course, the, the problem now is that they're on our roads. So we have to be careful as well. We spoke about the, the Ibex. We spoke about the different names for the Ibex being chamois. And I said before well, that this, of course, is the rock goat. And you have another picture of that up there. Uh, down at the bottom is the Capriolo, as we said before. It's the roe deer. But the real big deers are usually only seen uh, in the Monviso region. Usually they don't come around the Cuneo. Now, I would like Sergio's opinion about this. What do you think about that? Do you think that's true? All right. Um, now, I'm just going to pause because we're getting lovely messages here. And let's see. All right. So. Okay, I like walking. We said that you talk about wild animals. Yes, I'm going to keep going in just a minute. Um, yeah, I love the sea of my Liguria. So I believe Cinta is from Liguria. Uh, I hope I have given you a dignifying uh, definition of the sports and of the Cinque Terre tour. Cinta, what did you think about that hike? Uh, have you done it before? Can you give us your input? Liliana says, I love Vespa Tour in Lange. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's quite kind of you to say. It's, it's quite romantic. And uh, of course, that's for the ladies. Um, but why not also the quad, as I was uh, saying before. Very nice. Also the hot balloon. I believe there's a hot balloon in uh, Fosano, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, very nice. Giovanni says, I hike in the Valle Susa area, and my favorite trek is in the Valle Argentera. Okay. Once you reach the top of one of the mountains, all right, so you're talking about the summit. Another word for peak, the top of the mountain, is the summit. Once you reach the top of one of the mountains, you'll see a magnificent 360-degree view, including the Mong Viso. All right or Mount Bizo, as uh, Giovanni puts it. As for dangers, I would point out that Mare Mano shepherd dogs are quite challenging. Yes, yes, okay. From what I've gathered, you've had, you've had a serious experience there. Uh, I've also had my experiences with dogs. And um, uh, yes, it, it, it is true in the sense that I love animals. I am really not afraid of dogs. But uh, they're doing their jobs, aren't they? Because they're defending uh, the cattle uh, and the herds. So yeah, they're just doing their jobs, but you have to be careful. Um, also, um, just not trusting them, I think is the best solution. And uh, maybe having a stick, it's not very nice, but it is useful, all right? Sergio says, it's clear, thank you. Well, thank you, it's my pleasure. Let's keep going. Uh, just while we're waiting for uh, for the others. Again, uh, I uh, I mentioned the wild bear and the lynx. Let's see if I can show this to you. Here it is. Chinsia has uh, sent us another message. Let's look at this. West, the sea of West Liguria in many city has blue flag and is very clean. Yes, I believe, I believe that uh, the seas in um, all around Italy as a peninsula. So from the Adriatic to the Mediterranean, lovely, lovely waters. Yes, very true. Um, so. Chintia, would you suggest the scuba diving in certain areas instead of others? Or do you think all of the Liguria is uh, good for scuba diving? Um, I'm thinking also for families, would you suggest snorkeling or also something a little bit more serious like scuba diving? Uh, Chintia, I would really like your opinion there. 
Gabriela, hello, Gabriela says, I like the fisherman's trail in Portugal. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Sounds great to me. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I just finished watching uh, a documentary in Portugal on uh, the famous uh, canyon there with uh, the great, fantastic waves. That's wonderful. I have to say I'm very attached to uh, Portugal, which is, of course, uh, the last uh, land right before the Atlantic. And for me, it's quite emotional because it reminds me that on the other side of the Atlantic is Canada, where I'm from. So yeah, pretty emotional. Love Portugal. Um, just for Sergio, here it is, the brown bear and the lynx once, once again, uh, risking extinction in Italy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and luckily, uh, you can find these again in the Brenta region, uh, in the Friuli and the Venezia region, and uh, also um, right there at the border with uh, Switzerland, from what I've read. All right, so just trying to get this forward. Here we are again, and we spoke about the birds as well. Uh, Sergio says, the lynx, I think, uh, exists uh, in Italy. Yes, yes, it does. As I said before, in the Brenta region, from uh, what I've read, uh, but it's uh, also up there in the border with Switzerland. And uh, in Italy, they don't have many of those, so we have to be careful. My city is Cerialis, says Cinzia, Savona, blue flag. All right, thank you. So Cinzia, once again, if I'm into scuba diving, would you suggest Savona or maybe just sailing or, as I said before, snorkeling? All right, now uh, talking also about prices, different prices for scuba divers. Um, now, of course, all the sports are uh, very expensive, as you well know. The only sport which I think is uh, less expensive, I will not say the least, but less expensive, um, is hiking, if you have a good pair of shoes there, and a good backpack with a good um, clothes. Uh, for the rest, maybe um, sports can get pretty expensive. We saw the uh, uh, the gear, the equipment for skiing. Skiing is a very expensive sport, uh, if uh, I may say so. And let's go back to the wild animals. Um, this is a section dedicated to the birds. Many different birds. The woodpecker on the left, il picchio, as you call it in Italian. We call it the buzzard, the buzzard. The hawk falcon, which is very typical uh, in, uh, in the Cuneo region, uh, which you call the poiana, which is the falcon with the curvy head there. It has a soft, uh, curvy head. The winter owl, again, which looks like the Harry Potter owl, the hedwig, is uh, a very common bird that you can find in this region. And the pheasant, which I might say, is a beautiful uh, bird, but is quite good in a dish. And we will get back uh, to that in uh, a week's time, maybe uh, speaking about culinary, um, culinary um, habits and things to eat in the Cuneo region, all right? Uh, one thing that I did say, which is a curiosity, I found out by myself the other day, uh, while I was driving in uh, Cuneo uh, along the fields, the corn fields, I saw a couple of seagulls and I asked an expert and uh, he told me that the seagulls, uh, this is for Cinzia, the seagulls are flying in, are flying from Liguria all the way up to Cuneo. They're changing their habits. Uh, I think that's quite interesting. And I did not put the Huron. The Huron, of course, is a very uh, lovely bird as well. All right. We spoke about the wolves. I believe we had the pleasure a couple of weeks ago uh, of having with us a, someone who is uh, directly responsible of uh, the center 
of the wolves. Uh, if she is with us, uh, please step forward. Let us know something about the wolves. Uh, as I said before, my personal opinion is wolves do not bite men. They do not. They are not aggressive as uh, the myth says they are. Uh, absolutely not, unless uh, it's a mother who's taking care of uh, her puppies. Uh, again, wolves usually do not attack unless they're starving. And then, of course, we all know what they do attack. And, uh, of course, uh, which probably is the reason why we have the myth of the wolves because of the farmers, right? Lovely, lovely idea up in Entraque. Very lovely idea. Flock of sheep, herd of cattle, wild boar and roes. Again, uh, suggestions to be careful on the roads. Does anyone uh, out there, um, would anyone like to share their opinion on the, this, um, this problem? Now, of course, we should be driving pretty slowly, but that does happen. And until it's daytime, maybe you can avoid accidents, but during the nighttime, it does get scary. All right. Uh, so, any one of you out there ever had the experience of uh, having car trouble due to wild animals? Please feel free to let us know, All right? Uh, sometimes uh, you will cross a herd of cattle or a flock of sheep and so maybe you've stopped and then all of your car suddenly uh, is just circled by these animals, right? And you have to be careful because of the horns, because of the horns, they will destroy your car. So yeah, you have to be careful there. All right, Sergio, um, asking you directly, have you ever had this kind of accident before? Uh, we also saw other kinds of wild animals um, or animals uh, you, uh, you could find in the woods or in the outdoors, uh, common animals. Sometimes maybe you don't know the names. Well, here they are. So again, the first one top left is the whistler. The whistler, sometimes uh, we call it the marmot which is the most common name of all of them, right? The fox, again, the porcupine, the squirrel, and the badger. All right, now, Jinsia says, um, in Luguria, we have seahawks. Wow, very nice. And many roe deer in the interland. Really? All right. Now, uh, you also have hedgehog, hedgehog. Uh, again, very good dishes, I might say. Have to be careful, right? You have to be careful out there. Yes. Um, we spoke about the grass snake before and the viper. So I'm just going to uh, unshare my screen once again so we can speak directly. And uh, here we are. Okay, so I'm back. Hello, everyone. Um, I would really like your input on the five trails uh, that I uh, suggested, starting from uh, the uh, Dolomites. What did you think about that? Anyone out there, would you like to share your opinion? Let's start with something basic. What is your favorite sport? What is your favorite sport? Are you a skier? Are you a cross-country skier, or are you an alpine skier? And if you are, what is your favorite spot? Is it here in Cuneo, or is it in the Dolomites, or is it in Valdosta? Please let us know. And I'm just going to take it towards the end. And um, talking also about, talking also about landscapes the landscapes what is your favorite landscape we spoke about the islands the different islands and what they have to offer 
uh, I would really like to hear your input so we can uh, we can keep the conversation going. All right. Uh, I've never had the pleasure of going to Elba, uh, but uh, I would really like to do that. And I think I would um, go about it cycling. I would go about it cycling. I would probably rent a car. So uh, operators, let me know. Is it a good solution, do you think? And is it a good solution to rent a car, rent bicycles? And while we're on the subject, what do you think about the e-bike? What do you think about the e-bike? E-bikes this year are really, really um, a new input. And um, I, think, I think they're a wonderful idea, especially for uh, senior citizens who have trouble and uh, so it helps them uh, to keep their own pace. Uh, so I would really like to know, do you have an e-bike? Do you have an e-bike? Would you suggest it? Or do you think that's a bad idea? Now, going back to, um, I'm just going back in the messages there, someone wrote down, uh, I think it was Liliana. I love Vespa tour in Lange. All right. Uh, I would really like to do that. Liliana, uh, why do you think that is a good idea? Would you like to give your own opinion there? Why do you think Vespa tour is a good idea in Lange? All right. Okay. So uh, while I'm waiting for uh, your input, Let's keep going, all right? I'm just um, thinking right now about public transport because we, we spoke about renting cars, uh, which of course is quite an attractive solution for tourists. And uh, we spoke again about our uh, little uh, transport in, um, in uh, on uh, Vespa there in the Lange. Now, what do you consider to be the best way of touring the Lange region? And would you use the public transport? So let's go into this. Let's talk about the public transport. Can it be useful? What are public transports? We've got the train. So. Uh, here the preposition is by train, so you can say take the train, you can say uh, get the train, and also the bus. The bus, another word for bus is coach. Have you ever heard of that word before? Let me write that down for you in the chat so you can see it. There you are, it's a synonym. It's a synonym of bus, coach. What do you think about the coach? So, is it a good way to travel through Italy? Is the bus a good way to travel through Italy? Or do you believe the train is a lot better? It's a good means of transport. All right, so we've got, let's write this down. We've got the train. We've got the bus. We can rent a car. All right. Um, please let me know what you prefer. Which is the most expensive? Now, that's a good question for you. Probably renting a car, renting a car, but it will give you a lot more freedom. Whereas uh, touring by bus or by train, you have to wait for the train schedules. You have to wait for the bus schedules. Ah, Giovanni, thank you for writing. It says fast speed train is very good for long distance. All right, now, are you talking about uh, the, um, is that the red train? Please uh, help me out here. What is the name? Is it, um, uh, what is the name of that train? The um, the rapid train in Italy, I can't think about. Freccia Rossa, is that it? Yes, thank you, Giovanni. Freccia Rossa, all right. So, Giovanni, would you suggest using Freccia Rossa to tour Italy? 
let's see if Giovanni will give us an answer there. Um, all of Italy or maybe specific cities? Yes, Giovanni is it's quite, uh, <laughs> it's quite prompt. He said yes. All right. Now, um, let's talk about Freccia Rossa. Do you consider trains to be expensive in Italy if you think about the other European countries? What do you think about that? Uh, you can travel from Turin to Naples in the blink of an eye, right? Great. And so, uh, Giovanni, do you consider trains to be um, very comfortable? Uh, I'm asking because, of course, if you leave Turin to go to Naples, uh, that's that's quite a distance, right? Uh, do you usually travel to Naples by car, or do you usually use Freccia Rossa to travel? Uh, Giovanni, what do you think about that? Let's listen, all right. If anyone else would like to join, I think it would be very nice. It's only a six, seven hour trip by train, all right. Quicker than by car, is that your suggestion? Quicker than by car, all right. So, um, by car, it would take a lot more time, all right. So, uh, you're suggesting Freccia Rossa. Is it expensive? Is Freccia Rossa more expensive? Then, for example, if you think about the French the French trains, uh, maybe I think uh, velocity level there, speed level, uh, we're about the same, right? It's about the same. I'm just wondering if it's expensive. That's what I'm wondering. Um, maybe it's a good way to see the landscape, right? Because if you're traveling by car, uh, maybe you want to get there pretty quickly. You're on the highway. The highway is quite expensive also, and you don't have the opportunity of seeing the landscape, right? Giovanni, do you agree with me on this? Traveling is, is Giovanni says, it's cheaper uh, that flying or traveling by car, and you can relax. All right, very good. Now, flying, I think that's quite interesting. Yeah, then you're making a comparison. Very good. The answer is then. If you book in advance, you can find economic solutions. All right, Gabriela, thank you for your input. Yes, so true. Planning in advance, that's the correct trick, isn't it? Um, now, I, I, I haven't said anything about flying and the airport. As you well know, we have different possibilities in Italy. And none the least, also Le Valigi. What do you think about this airport? Do you think this is a good uh, airport? And do you think it will expand in a near future? I would really like your input on this. Uh, maybe Giovanni uh, says that. Um, let's, let's read back again what Giovanni said. It's cheaper than flying or traveling by car. All right. Well, from what I've been told, there are some uh, good, uh, good bonuses, good bonuses uh, if you're traveling from Le Val DJ. All right. Gabriela, what do you think about this? Do you think it's a good idea to fly in and out? And why not use fly and drive? Fly and then rent, rent a car, rent a car. Okay, now while you're thinking about this, I'm, I'm going to wait for your answers. Uh, let, me, let me just go over once again, uh, talking about flying, we've got, of course, different possibilities. And uh, again, we have uh, the Caselle Airport, I believe it's called. And uh, then we have uh, Malpensa and Linate. Which one do you think is the best airport? Uh, I would also like to chip in in Liguria and say there's an airport in Genova. And um, I would also like you to consider the Nice airport. Now, uh, please, please give me an input on these airports. What do you think? What do you think? Giovanni, would you travel by? Uh, oh, Gabriella says, Le Valdigi is very comfortable, but if there is a fog, if there is fog, no flight. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, yes. So you have to be careful once again. And then, of course, 
your trip is ruined, right? You can ruin your trip. That is very true. All right. Um, I would like your opinion about the fly and the drive. I think that's the best solution so far, fly and drive. Because LA is a quite small airport. However, recently they have more European destinations available. Oh, very nice. Uh, Giovanni, does that include also Spain destinations and France destinations? Or would you say uh, more along the, the classical lines like Frankfurt? Uh, Giovanni, what do you think about that? Let's see what Giovanni says. All right. Now, I just want to go back once again with the fly and drive. I think it's the best solution. I really like the solution, fly and drive. And uh, of course, that is if you don't have the possibility of uh, driving across Italy towards new destinations. Giovanni says, new destinations to smaller cities to attract tourists. All right. So um, that's a good point, by the way. Um, smaller cities, but also smaller towns. We spoke about medieval towns before, and we said we said how up north we have medieval towns who look quite similar to Swiss towns, right, up in the mountains. But as you work your way down, uh, all of the towns are quite interesting are quite interesting all right um any other questions you would like to ask me anything about the pronunciation of the different technical words different vocabulary you've learned today um please forgive me i would really like your opinion on the sports what is your favorite sport um do you think that italy is a good destination if you're uh, a person who wants to dedicate their time to sports? Or do you think that Italy is more a place of discovering new cities or discovering, uh, again, historical landmarks? For example, I didn't put a picture of Pompeii or did I put a picture of Matera? Maybe these places could be interesting. I'm sure they would interest foreign tourists uh just like the alps there's something mysterious about the alps which always fascinate tourists all right um so i've had the pleasure of speaking to giovanni gabriella and uh once again let me see while i'm not just going down there um i've had also cinzia speak about liguria uh, I asked Chinsa what she thought about uh, scuba diving. Uh, let's see if she can give us an answer there. Sergio spoke about uh, different landscapes and Gabriella said she really liked Portugal. All right. <laughs> All right. Liliana took part in the conversation too with the Vespa tour in Lange. I'm really happy she liked that. It's, it's quite cool, quite cool. All right, and um, Francesca also, if I haven't mentioned her, uh, thank you, thank you, Francesca too. All right, so uh, we're almost through. We have uh, about 15 minutes to go. I'm just going to go down and check and see if anyone has wrote down anything different. Oh, okay, Cinzia wrote, she said, Unfortunately, Alta Valtanaro, where I live almost all year round, there is no longer the only historical train service. Did I write correctly? Yes, I believe you did. Remember to put the capital I there, which is important. Uh, the I is the only subject pronoun that is always written in the capital letters, even in the middle of the sentence, right? Yes, I understand. Historical train service, very nice. Uh, you're making me think of the um, uh, the Valle delle Meraviglie train, which was uh, pretty cool and even had kids going on there uh, to uh, see the museum with the different wild animals aboard. I don't know if you remember that about uh, 20, 20 years ago. And it was very nice. All right. What does it mean, Cinzia, to live in Alta Val Tanaro? What is your suggestion? Do you have many trails up there? What is the 
big um, touristical site. Can you share something with us, Chinchao, with from the Alta Valtarnaro region? Right. Ormea. Ormea. Yes. All right. Very nice. Now I will have to do my geography there. Of course, not being Italian is uh, is something uh, my geography. I, I lack geography in this sense. All right. So, Cinzia, what can we find in Ormeo, for, for example? I think that's also a good question. I think that's also a good question. Can you please give us some uh, some good hints where we can go, where we can go to have fun? something cool to do something different also rafting why not rafting what do you think about that okay okay everyone so i think you've been quite kind you've been quite kind to share your opinions and um uh, i have to say it's it's been uh, quite uh, interesting because uh, as I was saying to you before, I am not a tour operator, so I've had to do my homework, uh, but I, I found it pretty interesting um, trying to figure out best hiking trails around Italy. There's just so much that has to be said. Uh, again, the historical landmarks, the islands to visit, and all the different wonderful ideas. Uh, uh, we still haven't spoken about the culinaries, um, but we will be doing that in the near, near future. Uh, so next time for the next meeting, we will be uh, discussing uh, various um, culinary expertise, restaurants, locations, and we will get into that and we will talk about uh, food. So I really hope you will join me once again and uh, uh, I really uh, do hope you will have the patience of joining me once again, as uh, sometimes technology is not easy to come around, but it's okay. It's, it's, been, uh, it's, been, it's been a good experience. All right. So before we say goodbye, I really do have to ask you once again, if there is something uh, anyone, anyone at all would like to share with me, uh, for example, I'm just going to uh, throw this in. What did you think about what I said about the wolves up in the Entraque region? Do you think that's interesting? Has this attracted many tourists? So please feel free to uh, give your input. Cinzia says, my husband's family home is in Ormea. All right, Cinzia. Um, so do you miss it? Do you miss it? Right. The big difference between uh, the various regions from the mountainous regions to the hills, as we said before, going all the way down to Liguria. Now, also talking about transport, it's kind of difficult because we've lost our Colli di Tenda and we have to go by the highway. Uh, is this, is this a problem, do you think, for tourists? Or is this a problem for Italians? What do you think about that? Now, I've lost Sergio. Sergio, I, uh, I don't know if, if he's interested in this kind of conversation or not. Uh, Giovanni, what do you think about that? We spoke about uh, different destinations. Uh, do you think the highway going down now to Liguria, is that a problem? Do you think that's a problem? All right. Tell us something about your Canada. Oh my goodness, Canada is a beautiful place. Very beautiful. It looks a little bit like uh, like uh, the, the province of uh, Cuneo. Uh, many wild animals, many hiking trails. Of course, we have uh, also different kinds of uh, wild animals, um, many, many different kinds of birds. Uh, but also uh, wild animals, of course, uh, the classic is the moose, right, the moose, and also the bison, uh, but uh, let's not forget the whales, the whales and uh, our famous white beluga, which is uh, going towards extinction right now, so we have to be careful there, and uh, uh, let's see what Giovanni says, the A6 has always been tricky, however, I find it scenic, <laughs> yes. 
it, it is true. It's a very scenic route, but if you're going too fast, you won't see anything, right? So once again, um, yeah, you have to be careful. It, it's it's a tricky highway. Uh, have to, it's it can be dangerous. Maybe I would suggest maybe the different colors, different colors to go down. Uh, I believe that's called the Nava, or is it also the San Bernardo, if I'm not mistaken? Now that's a good one for for cycling. Very very nice for cycling. All right, uh, Canada is a wonderful place. Uh, after you finish touring Italy, do go to Canada. I'm sure you will uh, you will enjoy Canada very very much, very very much. All right, um, um, the time is almost over, and um, I've I've really asked a whole bunch of questions, but. Um, I know it's not easy to participate and it's not easy to write in English without having any doubts. Um, Liliana says, it's a big problem, closure of Tenda. Yes, it's a big problem. It's isolated, everything, hasn't it? Isolated. Has this caused trouble for you also, uh, for your jobs? Has this been a problem for you? Uh, please feel free to comment on this. Uh, Gabriela says, Thank you. Well, thank you. It's it's been my pleasure, of course. Uh, really, it's uh, sometimes it gets difficult because um, maybe you don't uh, the students don't feel like sharing. But this hasn't been the case this time. This time you've been quite friendly and sociable. Uh, all of you, all of you have given uh, back some uh, some input. So it's it's really nice. Uh, Liliana, the big problem closure of Tenda. Wow, how long is that going to last? How long will we ever see the tenda opening once again? Uh, that's a big question there for you. And the relationship we have with France, I think it's made it uh, quite difficult. Liliana, what do you think about that? Would you like to share your opinion once again? Okay. Okay. I think we, we pretty much wrapped it up, wrapped it up. Um, let me just finish by saying that any means of transport you do use to travel is uh, is wonderful, and it gives you many different kinds of opportunities uh, to uh, to be able to look at different landscapes in Italy this uh, afternoon, which is what we saw, and. Um, Let's see, Giovanni says, thank you, Paula. Well, thank you. Your lesson has been very helpful. Wow, well, thank you. I think that's a great compliment. Uh, I, I hope it's been helpful. Uh, sometimes, again, it's not easy with technology and it's not easy talking to all of you, not seeing any one of you. I know you're out there, but I can't see you. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for joining. Okay. And uh, as uh, I just wanted to finish on the means of transport. Whatever means of transport you do use, uh, make sure it's worth the while. And I'm sure touring Italy is worth the while. And uh, maybe next time you can give me a couple of advices on where to go. Your personal opinion, not just mine. Hello, I can see someone. Hello. Hello. Cinzia says, thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. Hello, uh, thank you for popping up like that. Really nice to see you out there. Okay. Oh, Marta as well. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So thank you, Paul. Uh, it's well, been great. You. It's very, very wow, helpful. Wow, well, thank you. And thanks, thank everybody, you. for sharing their messages in the chat. You were very dynamic today. Hope you. you You'll be so next week again for our last lesson together. All right. Wonderful. Thank you once again. I'm just going to wish you a good afternoon, everyone. Uh, there's an echo. I think that's me. Speaking, right? There's an echo. All right. So thank you, everyone. Just going to wish you a, a lovely afternoon. Thank you for your patience and your time. And I will see you, uh, crossing my fingers, I will see you again next week. We're going to be talking about food. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you, Cinzia. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Gabriela. If, if I've forgotten and anyone at all,
all in the chat, please forgive me. Thank you all. Have a good afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye for now.